Hey everybody, uh, no fake sponsor in this video. I know you guys love the fake sponsors, I do too, but for the Christmas season I wanted to showcase an organization that I think does a lot of good. The Animal Rescue League of Boston is an organization that does so much for homeless animals, and uh, I'm a big supporter of finding homes for homeless dogs. It's something that I'm very passionate about, so I wanted to showcase them for the Christmas season. Since we're going into Christmas and there are so many dogs out there that need a good home, I wanted to spotlight them here. Uh, please follow the link in the description below. Go visit the Animal Rescue League of Boston. Donate if you can. If you can't donate, that's fine. Just spread the link around and, uh, you know, let people know about this great organization that does so much for homeless animals. And after that heartwarming beginning, let's get into the carnage. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Deadly Games, a.k.a. Dial Code Santa Claus. We've made it to December, and you all know what that means, Christmas horror movies. There's nothing like taking the most joyous time of year and inserting murder and mayhem. Today we're going to look at a little-known cult classic from France, the same country that gave us Inside and Martyrs. This is going to be interesting. We follow little Thomas, a ten-year-old boy who wants to be Rambo when he grows up. He's obsessed with action movies, so much so that he plays action hero with his dog J.R. Plus, he makes these elaborate makeshift traps all around his mother's mansion. This house is huge. On Christmas Eve, Thomas's mom has to work, seeing as she's the owner of a major toy company. So Commando Jr. here is left home alone to take care of his ailing grandfather. As the night goes on, Thomas sets up a camera trap in order to prove the existence of Santa Claus. But Santa does not visit tonight. <laughs> Instead, little Thomas is visited by this disgruntled department store Santa, who's out for blood. So Thomas has to defend his home, himself, and his grandfather from this Kris Kringle psychopath. In order to talk about this movie, I have to talk about my mindset going into it. My friend Randy had brought this flick to my attention. He hadn't seen it either, but he had heard about it. Once he gave me some information and I looked into the movie a little more, it got me intrigued. I looked at the description, I watched the trailer, I read a couple of reviews. Everything was telling me that this was a mixture between Home Alone and Die Hard. In fact, this movie came out in 1989, one year before Home Alone. A lot of people say Deadly Games inspired Home Alone. I'm not sure how true that is. This movie came out in France, and not a lot of people talk about it now. And from what I've read, even less people talked about it back then. This does seem to be a forgotten cult classic. Anyway, hearing the concept, Home Alone meets Die Hard, it sounded like Deadly Games was going to be this fun piece of cheesy 80s schlock. I like cheesy 80s schlock. That's where my brain was when I sat down to watch this movie. But that's not what I got. I ended up getting this pretty suspenseful home invasion movie with a couple of gut punches. The premise is similar to Alone in the Dark, the 1982 slasher, not the 2005 piece of shit, in that once you get past one dumb aspect, the rest of the movie is good. Thomas messes around with the security system, and because of that, once the killer Santa arrives, everyone gets locked inside the house. It does 
sort of work because they set up that Thomas is a child genius, and that's true. He's a pretty cool kid. He can make all these elaborate traps, he can fix cars and drive them. He can set up prisons of our company. <laughs> If I were 10 years old again, I would want Thomas to be my friend, because he can drive. I'm going to get into some mild spoilers here. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil any major plot points, but I think it's important to talk about these things so you know what kind of movie you're getting into. Like I said before, everything I saw about this movie led me to believe it was going to be this cheesy combination of Home Alone and Die Hard, and the opening scene only adds to that expectation. <laughs> So I'm picturing fun action shenanigans as this kid and his dog fend off this crazy Santa. But then things took a turn. Thomas has set up the security system in his house to capture Santa on film. That's his goal, to prove that Santa exists. So then this crazy guy dressed as Santa breaks into his house by coming down the chimney, and this kid is so happy. His face is full of wonder. In his mind, he has seen Santa Claus. But then his dog comes into the room, barking at the intruder. And that's when we watch as a kid sees his dog get stabbed in the fucking neck. The look on Thomas's face shows us what we're getting into. This is a movie about a kid being traumatized as he tries to defend himself and his grandfather from a serial killer. Just so you know my position on dogs being killed in horror movies, I see that the same way that I see jump scares. It works when it's done right. And I do think that it was done right here because this is the catalyst for the trauma that Thomas will be experiencing. I still don't like seeing it, though. I work with dogs. I'm quite fond of them. Deadly Games is by no means the most disturbing horror movie I've ever seen. I've definitely seen flicks that are far more intense. It's not even a particularly bloody movie. The only on-screen death is the dog. But because I was expecting something fun and cheesy, I was taken off guard by how things went down. If I had known what this was going to be when I first watched it, I don't know if I would have been as affected by it as I was. But I think it's important to know what you're getting into. People may be disappointed that this is not the 80s schlockfest that it looks like it's going to be. I will say that this flick is legitimately suspenseful, and the way everything is filmed gives it this dreamlike atmosphere that adds to the tension. The main reason Deadly Games is so effective is because of how they treat Thomas. Given the fact that he plays hero and he likes to dress up and play action star, you expect this goofy kid who's going to be shouting one-liners while fighting Crazy Santa. That's not what they do here. They treat Thomas like a kid. True, he is fighting back against this psycho Santa, but he is scared. For most of the movie, Thomas is in tears. He's crying because he's scared of this guy. There's a scene where he has to climb out onto the roof to get away from this man, and he starts crying for his mother. Yeah, this isn't a bloody movie, but there are a couple of moments that are kind of heartbreaking. There's a scene where Thomas is bawling his eyes out while he's carrying the body of his dead dog. Mary, fuck. 
fucking Christmas. As horror fans, we've seen our fair share of sad moments in horror movies. I would argue that watching a crying kid carrying his dead dog after watching it get killed by who he thinks is Santa Claus... That's up there. This is a good movie, you just need to know what kind of movie you're getting into. I won't say that Deadly Games is my new favorite Christmas horror movie, but it's one that I will be adding to my watch list every year. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of about five, but I'm including J.R. the dog on that list. I'm still a little bitter about that. The kills are all off-screen deaths, but they aren't the point of the movie. The film is all about the suspense. It's made to put you on edge while watching this little boy fending off a serial killer. Thomas just works for this movie. I like how they treat him like a kid. Even though he is fighting back, he's still scared. I kinda like the bait-and-switch. You think you're getting a fun, cheesy movie, but you're actually getting something pretty intense. The movie has this dreamlike quality that only adds to the atmosphere. There are a couple heartbreaking moments, so just be ready for that. I'm giving this a 3.7 out of 5. It's a good horror flick for the holiday season. Just know what you're getting into. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like what I do here, or give it a thumbs down if you don't like what I do here. And while you're here, please go check out my horror movie Enjoy. This is a flick I made myself. It was posted on my old channel, and I thought it was lost forever, but it's back, and I'm so happy people can watch it again. And please go show some support for the Animal Rescue League of Boston. This is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. After watching this movie, I think we need to see some happy dogs. Hey, Jackie boy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Big ball, that's slobber.